Hi, this is Michael Kipp and we will continue with our exploration of the Anvil tool. So last time we created a little annotation by loading an annotation scheme that comes with Anvil. It was called example step 3. You can see the current specification or coding scheme right here. Uh, let's have a look at the specification in an editor. So the specification is an XML but don't let yet that um, discourage you from looking at the file because what you see here is actually quite easy to understand. You see here annotation spec and it's kind of a bracket uh, and so this is a specification of the annotation and what it tells you is in the body of the spec it tells you which tracks you want to have. So here's one track it's called words and you see it right over here and here's a second track this is called gesture face and you see it right below and here's the third track it's called gesture and you see it on the third line it's a third track so we have three tracks and every track can have certain attributes so the words track has one attribute it's a token and it's of type string so you can type in anything you know here in this token if you bring up the edit dialog you know you can type in any kind of alphanumeric sequence here and you click OK and you have it saved in that box. In the track gesture face you have something different it's um, it's an attribute where you have a controlled vocabulary so you have a bunch of elements uh, here that are options okay you can choose one of those so the gesture phase is in this scheme either preparation a stroke a hold or a retraction let's have a look at how that looks like so we create an element here really quick and anvil brings up the creation dialog and here in the attribute type you have a certain selection okay so this is to make coding more robust because you can only select one of those that you pre-specified. So let's say this is a preparation and I click OK and what you also can see is that it, it's color-coded. Let's add a stroke here and a retraction. So that's the typical sequence of a gesture and you see um, the attributes are filled in and it's also color-coded. In the specification you know the color coding is specified here as color okay now gesture phase is is a so-called primary track which means that you can let your elements actually start at any point in time and let them end at any point in time what we have here on the lower track is a track called gesture and this is of type span now this is something special because a span type track cannot live on its own it has to refer to some other track and this other track is called gesture phase so it's actually the phase right on top so this track here gesture depends on gesture phase it refers to it what does that mean it means that if you want to annotate something on this track so I place a green line here you can actually only you can only add an element that is as long as the sum of a bunch of other elements in the gesture phase track right so I could for instance create an element here and you see the pink shadow indicates where the new element would be created so I press 2 and so I created a new element and as you can see it extends exactly to the boundaries of the outward elements of the sequence that I marked here so let me show you another example here you know I can only I cannot make this any shorter or longer uh, because it actually depends on those two elements and this one depends on those two elements on the outward elements and actually what I can do is I can extend this preparation element here you know by right clicking and saying extend and as you saw first it was here and now it's here and the dependent element on the other track automatically extended here because actually on this track there are no begin and end times that are stored 
you only store a logical link to those dependent elements and if those change the gesture element will adjust. So this is quite convenient for relationships like gesture phase. A gesture phase is kind of one part of a gesture and on the next track we want to annotate a whole gesture so this um, is composed of the parts of gesture and so it's logical that this element should not be longer or smaller than uh, the exact boundaries of those elements and you have similar relationships for instance in natural language if you have words and sentences then a sentence obviously stretches exactly to the beginning of the first word and to the end of the last word uh, so this is the span type you can also see this here if we are in the gesture track you can see it here so this this window here on uh, in the upper right corner shows you the exact information of certain elements that you mark here but it also shows you a little bit of information of the track that you're in so you're in track gesture it's of type span and the referenced track is gesture face and it also gives you um, you know the current time and the extension of the current element here okay let me stop right here uh, and let you digest this see you in the next video